All right, I'm going to do a video showing the absolute hypocrisy and just double standards of the Ed Fenninger cult that just obsessively attacks me and attacks anyone I associate with, attacks Brian Dillinger. And these guys will just comment on every every video I put out and they'll just listen to every any little thing I say wrong and they'll just they'll take that and just completely twist what I'm saying and they'll just just hang on every single thing I say. It, it, it's just they're obsessed. But Go on Ed Fenninger's channel and just type in Faithful Servants, my channel name, and, you know, Zarek's got one attacking me, you know, Faithful Servants becomes a follower of Brian Dillinger. It was a video I did apologizing to Brian Dillinger, because I used to attack him constantly, and I came out and apologized, and, you know, there he is, and, like, literally a few hours after I posted my video, he comes out with this, Faithful Servants becomes a follower of Brian Dillinger. Dispensational confusion of my faithful service part two. Faith works a no is a theological landmine. You know he goes into the description that he's talking about me. Um, eternal salvation in the Old Testament was not by faith alone, or was by faith alone, not by works. And you got to watch out for these little buzzwords they have. They'll say, "See, there's eternal salvation and there's physical salvation." Because whenever you show them verses that prove dispensational salvation, they'll just say, "Oh, it's physical salvation." It's talking about physical salvation. And that's kind of what they always run to, to prove that dispensational salvation is not true. Then again, you know, there's no sin of interracial marriage attacking me on my video. Uh, dispensational confusion by faithful servants, part one. And you see with Fenninger, everyone's confused but him. You see, he'll come out against anyone and everyone under the sun, and every single person is confused except for Edward Fenninger. You'll see that with this guy. And, uh... You know, again, he's just attacking me. And, and look at the lengths of these videos, too. Uh, like an hour and 43 minutes long, one hour and eight minutes long. He just sits there in front of the camera, just picking out every any little thing I say, and just, it's just obsessive. And Fenninger's recent video he put out um, saying that it is come as archaic as of has come. I mean, come on. That, that's just ridiculous. Let me play you a clip of this. Good afternoon. I just uh, watched uh, Brother... Uh, Shepherd's ambassador to a video um, refuting John Kagan, Kagan, and one of the things he did was dealing with the issue of uh, the big deal that these guys make about Jesus is come in the flesh. And if you don't say that that way, it's some called, uh, called heretic. That is um, no. I said that. The, I mean, the Bible says clearly that, that if anyone confesses not that Jesus is come in the flesh, they're antichrist. I mean. It's very simple. But you see, he has to explain that away because he over and over again says, oh, Jesus did come or has come. He has to try to explain away the text that condemns him. He always does this. Whenever there's a text that condemns his theology, he has to just twist it and explain it away somehow. Oh, sorry, my cat's meowing. Let me just open the door for him. Question come, uh, who has come in, uh, in uh, is, is archaic. Is come, that's what I mean. Is come, and I'll give you uh, some a bunch of other verses that. Uh, so he says that is come is archaic of has come. Like, watch this, it's 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 crazy. I mean, just the lengths and depths he'll go to to try to explain away scripture that condemn him, it, it's ridiculous. Uh, that show that we would say has come, or or shall come, sometimes, but has come. It's the usual way we say it now. So basically, it's just an archaic way of saying, has come. So, let me get this straight. Is come is archaic as of has come, even though is come is present tense and has come is past tense. Huh? I mean, just the warp theology of this guy. But, you know, you go down in the comments. I actually rebuke him down in the comments section. And, you know, again, they just, just don't even hear the rebuke. And then, you know, this this wicked Jezebel right here, this Linda Edmondson, she just comments on every single video I put out and just, she's wicked. I mean, and she says, John Craig and is worse off now that he joined the Brian Dunlinger cult. This kid is so as full of pride and is very self-righteous. Hmm. It's kind of funny because Fenninger just won't be corrected. So, I mean, who is the self-righteous one? You can show Fenninger just scripture after scripture that, that debunk his theology. He just, just will not be corrected. I've never seen him ever be corrected before. And, you know... They're calling me. They're calling me lost and everything, and and uh, you know, saying that I've joined Brian Dellinger's group and um, I'm a cult member and everything, you know. And, and this guy, Shepherd's ambassador, I watched his video against me. He, he's like falling all over himself. He's just, I mean, there's no Holy Spirit there. He's just, it's just totally dead. It's just, just 
all it is is just this theological, just, you know, it's ridiculous. I mean, these Ed Fenrir goons, they're just constantly falling all over themselves. They're just, you know, they're just, they can't, you know, because again, the Holy Spirit is not leading them, so they just, they can't, they can't do a proper video. They just, they can't do it. The Holy Spirit is not leading them. They just, they're just repeating what people have said. They're just reading books and everything, you know. Uh, the Holy Spirit is not leading them into all truth, was what I meant to say. Uh, you know, they go on. You know, it, they, call, they call me a dingleberry. You know, they call me a dingleberry. I like that one. Um, everything. But here's the hypocrisy of this Fenrir cult. Because you can see they're calling me lost. And here's the hypocrisy. These guys believe in eternal security. And not only eternal security, they believe in eternal security in every single dispensation, even the time of Jacob's trouble. Watch this. Good morning. I just uh, finished watching a, a video by uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Kim, uh, Dr. Uh, Gene Kim. And this video he was discussing uh, the errors in Han Anderson and Harvin dealing with the mark of the beast. Now, of course, uh, Harvin and, and uh, Anderson are post it, It's Hovid, not, not Anderson. Just, I'm really not, sorry. It's Hovid, not Hovid. Sorry, got names mixed up there. See, I'm not perfect. You know, I'm like Fendinger. I'll admit, I'm not perfect post-trip guys and uh, I'm a pre-trip guy but the real issue it comes down to eternal security in the tribulation and a faith work system the uh, these guys are coming out with the faith works they think because you take you don't take the market work that's a work it's a work that shows faith just like uh what so not taking the mark is a work that shows faith I mean do you just see I mean it's ridiculous I mean he just it would twist the scripture. It's like, I mean, he. I, I've seen some of his goons try to explain James 2. Oh, James 2 teaches faith alone. I mean, they just can never handle scripture that proves a works-based system. What Fenninger is basically saying, that not taking the mark is faith alone. Huh? I mean, pro, just proving my point, there's no Holy Spirit in this guy. The Holy Spirit won't lead you to, to come up with something so ridiculous. Let me show you. What the Bible says, because what Fenninger is essentially saying, when it, come, when it comes down to it, he's basically saying not taking the mark of the beast is not a work. So you have to have faith and not take the mark of the beast, but that's still faith alone. Somehow, my cat just came back in my room. Let me show you why that doesn't work. Let me just close the door real quick. Okay. Oh. Sorry, my cat just keeps coming in and out of my room. It's it's kind of annoying. Okay, Revelation chapter fourteen. Verse 9 to 11. I mean, again, just the warped theology and warped thinking of Edward Fenninger is just, he'll just do anything to explain it with a text that proves dispensational salvation. And I, and I believe it's not just because he's ignorant. I believe he has a lying spirit inside of him that is stopping him from seeing the truth. I mean, it's ridiculous. But Revelation chapter 14, verse 9 uh, it says, And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, uh, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Notice how it says, If any man worship the beast, and it says that they'll taste of the wine of the wrath of God. So in Fenninger's logic, you can go into the time of Jacob's trouble, you have to refuse to take the mark of the beast, but that's somehow still faith alone. Um... It's it just the warp theology. I mean, and I, 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 I'll say it again. I believe that, that for him to just come up with such a twisted theology, he's not just coming up with that. My cat won't stop meowing. Sorry about that. He won't just. He's not just coming up with that with his own mind. I believe there actually are devils inside of him that are making him come up with weird, weird theology like this. But so somehow refusing to take the mark is somehow still faith alone. Kitty, stop meowing. <laughs> Kitty, I do apologize. My cat is just. Uh, where was I? Uh, verse 10, And the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his is indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels. Kitty. And in the presence of the Lamb. So, I have a question for Edward Fenninger. So, he believes we have eternal security in the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, what happens if we take the mark of the beast? Because he claims Christians won't take it. Okay, what happens if someone does? Because here's its common argument for... Uh, proving, oh, there's faith alone in every dispensation. They'll say, well, the true Christians won't take the mark of the beast. Okay, two problems with that. Either way, that still proves a faith work system in the time of Jacob's trouble because they open, they still admit that you have to refuse to take the mark of the beast because it clearly says if any man worship the beast, kitty, sorry, my cat just jumped on top of me. If any man worship the beast in his image and receive the mark in his forehead or in his hand, it says if any man, they'll, take, they'll taste of the wine of the wrath of God. 
So that proves you, you have to refuse that mark of the beast if you don't want to taste the wine of the wrath of God. But second of all, um, they'll say that no real Christians will take it. Okay, what if a true Christian does take it by his own will? Does he lose his salvation or is he to still eternally secure? I would like to see an answer to that one. Answer that one, Ed Fenninger. Um, but again, I mean, really? Oh, Kitty, stop. Kitty. My kitty, my cat is just really... Uh, this is not going well. Let me just continue. Just like the Hebrews 11, it's a work. It's not a work that's part of your faith. In the words, gives gives you salvation. It's a work. So it's not a work that gives you salvation. Um, so you can take the mark of the beast and you're still saved. So because it says, if any man worship the beast in his image, they'll taste of the wine of the wrath of God. So is he implying? And friend, if you're watching this, are you implying that a Christian can still can still take the mark and be saved? Because you know it clearly says, if any man worship the beast in his image. It's crazy. I mean, just the, the demonic theology of this guy. That shows you have faith. That's what that, that's what not taking. Uh, it doesn't say that anymore in the text. It shows you have faith. You see, he has to add the scripture. He has to do, he'll do anything he can to explain away the text. Anything he can. He'll twist it just so hard to explain away the text. The mark will show you have faith. If you take the mark of the beast, it shows you haven't faith. That's the that's the crucial thing. Your faith. Uh, it doesn't say that in the text. It says if any man worship the beast in his image. I mean, just the warp theology. I'm just going to keep playing. I had to let my cat out, out of my room again. Own up by what you do, but it shows what you believe. It isn't part that you uh, that the work somehow added or met or, or, or blended in with um, with your uh, your faith, which is. Uh, so you basically can take the mark and still be saved. I mean, that's what he's basically implying. He's saying that it's not part of your salvation. So basically, he is implying you can take the mark of the beast and still be saved and still have eternal security. I mean, proving my point that there are actually devils that are deceiving this guy and there is a lying spirit inside of him. But here's the hypocrisy I'm going to go over. So they're saying they believe in eternal security, as shown in that video. Well, it's kind of funny because they are saying I believe they believe in eternal security. But then when I left their cult, Ed Fenninger's cult, they're saying that I'm lost now. So basically what they're saying is that I believed, but I was never saved to begin with. And in order for me, here's the funny part. So these easy believers and people, they're work salvationists. Here's how you know. Because they're going to say that if I need to be saved, I have to stop preaching repentance and go back to preaching faith alone. Then I can be saved. They're work salvationists. But here's the hypocrisy. So I was, so they thought I was saved, but then I'm not saved because I joined, you know, Brian Dillinger's supposed cult, but even though it's, no, it's nowhere near cultic. And you have this comment from this wicked, you know, Jezebel. And she just comments over... I mean, just, these are all comments from one video. She just comments over and over and over again on one video. She says, this kid is such a liar. I'm not a kid. I'm actually an adult. I'm not a kid anymore. Uh, this kid is a wolf. It has been proved he is not saved. So I was saved when I was following uh, Fenninger, but then I'm not saved. So in order for me to be saved, I have to basically leave Brian Dillinger's cult and go back to Fenninger. Hmm. This kid is such a Pharisee who thinks they don't sin. Um, that's a complete lie. When have, I, when have I ever said that? That's a flat out lie. Uh, what a hypocrite is that when someone gets into Brian Dillinger's cult and they show their fangs ready to attack. None of these people are saved. They serve the devil in the name of Jesus. Hmm. Really? So I was saved when I was following Fen when I was following Fenninger, but now I'm not saved. And again, saying that I don't, saying that I'm that who think I, I think I don't sin, that is a complete lie. So re Lord rebuke you on that. Uh, and she comments again, all of Denninger's cult, all cult people are going to hell. So I'm basically, so what did I lose my eternal security or something? Brian will probably have a room with Jack Hiles, you know, his kid faithful servants or faithful, uh, defend, what is a, a defend? A, oh, this kid faithful defend a thief, de defend a thief. Sorry. Not good at reading on a computer who does not work for a living. Uh, again, um, that's a lie. And it's kind of funny. Um, how do you know that? You know, how, how, how does she know I don't work for a living? I have a job, okay? I work at Shoppers, okay? I do work. So it, it, it's just amazing how these, these Fenninger goons just somehow know about It's amazing how they just think they know everything about our person. I mean, I've seen them claim, you know, I've seen them talk about how Brian Dillinger doesn't meet with people. Um, how do you know that? It, it's amazing how they somehow know everything about my personal life and just know everything that I do in my personal life. Even though they, they like, what do they have cameras watching me or something? Like, how how does that work? Okay, it's weird. Saying I'm a demon from hell. Even Roman Catholics say God bless you. Really? And none of Brian Dillinger's people are saved. You know, you get the picture. 
Uh, Romans ten thirteen. You were told the point, the point, what the point was about, and you ignore it and lie. No, I actually told the truth that Romans ten thirteen is for us today, and you just you know again, this guy is just so he stumbles all over himself. He's messed up. Uh, no, he did say people are sealed with the Holy Spirit to promise until the day of redemption. He's referring to salvation today. And again, he, he was commenting on a video where I was pointing out how King's Table literally said that basically King Saul was still saved when the Holy, when basically the Spirit of God departed from him, you know. And again, these guys, they just can't handle Scripture. They just cannot handle Scripture that prove dispensational salvation. And, you know, the gospel, this is the gospel according to Brian Dellinger and his goons, you know. Believe in Brian Dellinger and thou shalt be saved. Total lie, you know, just slandering and Samuel the prophet said that Saul uh, would be with him. Yeah, but here's the question though. Was Saul saved when the Holy Spirit departed from him? Because it's contradiction to Ephesians 1.13, which says the, the Holy Spirit, or it says that, that you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. It's a contradiction. So even if he was still saved, it still says the Holy Spirit can depart from people. You know, and, uh, oops, sorry about that. Uh, my uh, OBS. And then, uh, if your group has a ministry pointing out heresies, we ha we can have a ministry exposing these heresies. Um, the Bible says the heretic after the first and second admonition reject. So if I'm a lost hellbound on heretic, you're supposed to mark me and avoid me. Not just make video after video after video against me and just listen to any little thing I say and just... That's not biblical. If I'm a heretic, you mark me and avoid me. You do two admonitions. Heretic after the first and second admonition reject. Okay, you shouldn't be doing more than two videos against me. And they're probably going to say, eh, he did, he did videos against Frenninger. Um, my videos were responding to Ed Frenninger's false accusations and heresy and lies. So, yeah, I have a right to respond. But, again, the Bible says the heretic after the first and second admonition reject. You don't just, just listen to any, like, if, if, you know, it's funny. They'll say Steven Anderson's a heretic, but I don't see them just obsessively attacking Anderson, you know. Denlinger has made over 30 videos attacking Steven Anderson. This kid is a hit. Okay, 30 videos. Okay, Fenninger has made hundreds and hundreds of videos attacking Brian Denlinger. Okay, that's a weird comparison. Just, this kid is such a hypocrite, brainwashed by the Denlinger cult. You stalk our channels. How? And where's the proof on that? Again, where, there's no proof. Uh, you didn't just come across. I'm not buying what you're selling. You know. Uh, no, I don't just stalk your channels. I, I see the hair because I, I've I've seen a lot of Fenrir's videos back when I was part of his cult, so I, I know what he believes, you know. And uh, but again, it's just the hypocrisy. So I was saved when I was part of Fenrir's cult, but now I'm not saved anymore, you know. Okay, this kid is such a hypocrite who thanks to his Messiah Brian Dillinger. She she just comments. See again, she just comments over and over again. Notice how anyone who joins the Brian Dillinger cult turns out like a ravening wolf wanting to attack. Hopefully, the kid will leave that satanic cult. Hmm. Yeah, don't count on it. And King's Table says you don't like Jesse Morrell, but stop making videos about him. I made one video. I made two videos about Jesse Morrell. Okay, I don't I don't just make video after video after video after video after video against him. It's crazy. So, just, I want to show the hypocrisy of this cult, this, uh, just attack Brian Dillinger, attack anyone who's associated with them. And there are points where I disagree with Brian Dillinger on, okay? So, if I'm, if I'm a, if I'm a cult member, how does that work? If I'm, if I'm such a, you know, if I'm a cult member, how does that work if I disagree with Brian Dillinger? Because cults, what they do is that they just say you can't question the leader. So, how does that work? It's ridiculous. Just want, I just want to do this video showing just the absolute, just hypocrisy and lies from this Ed Fenninger, just... Just people who stalk our channels and just just stalk everything. They just just think they I mean, people who just think they know everything about my, our personal lives. They they think we know what we do off camera. You know, it's crazy. So don't be deceived by this false cult. Uh, there's plenty of, of material out there exposing Fenninger and just his his double standard, his lies, his hypocrisy. And I've done my own stuff too, and just how he twists the scripture and just I mean that video here, uh, tr uh, saying eternal security in the time of Jacob trouble that. that it's just so heretical. It just shows the lengths and depths he'll go to to twist scripture to prove um, non dispensational salvation. So, anyway, God bless you. Goodbye. Oh, I probably, uh, I forgot to mention, I'm probably a Roman Catholic for saying that now. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm so afraid. Oh, wow. Uh, God bless you. Goodbye.